Hi, and welcome to lesson 9.1 on circumference. So you're going to know the formulas for area and circumference. Well, just for circumference. A future lesson is going to be on area of circles. So we're going to explore circumference, and we're going to define a circle first. A circle is a set of points at a plane that are fixed at a fixed distance from the center. So here's the center, and all these points at a fixed distance around from the center uh, makes a circle. And there are uh, components to a circle. One is the radius. The radius is the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. And the diameter is a segment, a line segment that, pa that crosses from one edge to the other and it has to pass through the center. And the circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. Think of it as the perimeter of the circle. Okay, so we are going to further uh, uncover some truths about uh, circles. We're going to use a measuring tape to find the circumference of five circular objects, which I've already chosen here. A Mod Podge uh, bottle, a candle, right there, a, uh, what, Vix Vapor Rub had that around the house. Uh, a cap. I didn't know what to call this, but it's that circular part right there. Cap and a glass. So you're also going to notice that things are going to go in and out right here. Looks like I smudged something right there, but uh, things are going to go in and out because it's going to be the camera's going to be focusing on the things that I have. So uh, first, the Mod Podge, and I'm going to uh, measure the distance around in centimeters because here are and, and you need one of these flexible things right here so this is inches but I needed something that uh, has uh, finer uh, measurements here so I decided to use centimeters and right here I am measuring the, the circumference I said it was 13.3 centimeters so I took this right here and I measured around like this and I determined that this was about 13.3 right about there I, I thought well it looks like it's kind of like right there about 13.3 and so there's the 13.3 and then the four centimeters that's the diameter so the four centimeters was right across here so I have who boy this is gonna be hard for you to see so four right about there right Oh boy, can you see that? That's, yep, about four centimeters is the diameter. Oh, a little bit more than four centimeters, like 4.2. But I made it four. And now, there we go. Now we have the circumference divided by the diameter, and it's 3.325. Next, the candle. And I'm going to go kind of quick about this. I measured the distance around, which I said was about 26. Yeah, 26, and the distance across, 8. So let's see. Yeah, 8 centimeters right there. And 26 divided by 8. Oh, the candle. That's what's making the marks on there. But 26 divided by 8 is 3.25. Then I have the vapor rub. Vapor rub. And here, this was, what, about 16 point something? Yeah, 16.6, .6 I said about 16.6 ish and the, di the diameter I said was five so five boy a little bit more than five but these are all I mean I'm not being super accurate I'm trying to be accurate but as I look at this here the cap that cap was 8.3 centimeters and I was doing this 8.3 yeah, 8 point, about, there's 8, so 8.3, and then the distance across, I said was about 2.5, so about 2.5-ish, right there. And then the glass, glass, distance across, 8, you can see that as 8 right there, oh boy, a little bit less than 8 right there, and then, uh, right here, 
like 24 ish. I call it 25 at that point. So when I measured all of these circumference divided by the, as we can see that ratio of the circumference divided by the diameter is hovering right about the same. And now that I'm looking at my measurements, maybe I should have adjusted these a little bit more, but they're all hovering around the same kind of number right there. 3.32, 3.25, 3.32, 3.2, 2.4. And so based on all this information, I can now do this because I'm not going to be using that anymore. Uh, describe what you notice about the circumference divided by the diameter in your table. Well, the circumference divided by the diameter is always close to or a little more than three. And that's what the point is. It doesn't matter how big that circle is or how small that circle is. It's distance around divided by the distance across is going to be about the same number. And what that number is, I'm going to be telling you about here. So. The ratio of the circumference to the diameter, C divided by D, is the same for all circles. The ratio is called pi. And it has that symbol. And we also call it pi, pi. And you can approximate it as 3.14 or as 22 over 7. So my 3.32, 3. Point whatever, I was a little bit over on all those. But if that was more accurate, it probably would have been closer to 3.14 in each case. So. You can use pi to find the formula for a, the circumference. So for any circle, this pi is the circumference divided by the diameter. And to solve for c, well, that's what we're going to do here. So we have circumference divided by diameter is pi. We have to multiply each side by the diameter. And what that does is it gets these two cancel. And you're left with the circumference. And usually it's pi times diameter, and we, we usually write uh, diameter times pi, usually, or pi times diameter. Either way, it's the same thing. And so this is our formula for the circumference. Circumference is pi times the diameter. And the diameter is twice the size of the radius. That's another huge point on this. As I look at the radius, the radius is half the size of the diameter. Or So if the radius were 4 centimeters, that means the diameter is going to be 8 centimeters automatically. Done deal. Okay. So these two formulas are equivalent. If you're given the diameter, then you can just multiply by pi. If you're given the radius, you have to double it and then multiply by pi to find the circumference. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And we have an irrigation sprinkler. Water uh, is uh, water's in a circular region with a radius of 14 feet. So they gave you that right there. Find the circumference of the region, water by the sprinkler. Use 22 over 7 or use pi. Okay, so we have the formula here. We're using this formula because we're given the radius. And 2 times pi times the radius. So 2 times pi and the radius is 14. So they decided not to use... Uh, 3.14, they decided to use 20, 22 over 7 because 14 is a multiple of 7. And when you do this, you can cross cancel. You can, so this whole thing right here, I'll write 2 times 22 over 7 times 14. And 14 is the same thing as 14 over 1. And here you can cross cancel. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. So you can, so that makes it a little bit easier. So now you really just have to worry about 2 times 22 times 2 again. And it's all divided by 1. So 2 times 22 is 44, and 44 times 2 is 88. So it's about 88. Oh, and so circumference is exactly this. But once we start putting 22 over 7, 22 over 7 is not exactly pi. It's called an approximation for pi. So since that's approximately pi, we have a squiggly equal sign. That means about. This means exactly equal to. But now that we've used this, it's no longer exactly that. And in fact, pi is a decimal that goes on forever. Uh, and has no patterns to it. So uh, the best we can do is just that. So we can get about 88. So that, cir that, that circumference of the region watered by the sprinkler is about 88 feet. Okay. When is it logical to use 22 over 7 instead of 3.14 for pi? Well, I said it before here. When the radius or the diameter is a multiple of 7. 
as it was in this problem here. 14 is a multiple of 7. Okay, so you're asked here to find the circumference of the circle to the nearest hundredth. Okay, when you got that right there, I'm thinking we're going to be using decimals because we're going to be rounding. So I have the diameter this time of 11, the entire distance across. So I use circumference as diameter times pi, that formula right here. Remember, towards the top here, I was given a choice of which one. I was given the diameter, so I'm using that formula right there. And so it's the diameter times pi, and the diameter is 11. And 11 times 3.14 is 34.54. So it's about 34.54 centimeters. About because, again, 3.14 isn't the entire decimal. It's 3.14159265358979323 and so on. It goes on forever. We're just using part of the decimal. So that's where it makes it a, an approximation. All right. So we have using circumference. And... Uh, given the circumference of a circle, you can use the approximate circumference formula. Let me zoom out just a bit here. Uh, formula to find the radius or the diameter of a circle. You can use that information to solve problems. And here's such a problem. A circular pond has a circumference of 628 feet. So the distance around is 628 feet. A model boat is moving directly across the pond along the radius. Okay. Uh, at a rate of 5 feet per second. How long does it take the boat to get from the edge of the pond to the center of the pond? Okay, the find the radius of the pond first. We are given the circumference, and the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. And why are we using this one right here instead of diameter times pi? Because we're talking about the radius, and this formula uses the radius. So here, the circumference is 628, so I enter 628 for the circumference. And that's about 2 times pi, 3.14, times the radius. I have one variable. I'm trying to find out what that radius is. So I'm going to solve for r. 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. And to solve for r, I have to divide by 628, 6.28 to get to isolate r. But I have to do that on both sides of the equal sign. We're going to treat this like an equal sign. And 6, 628 divided by 6.28 is 100. So the radius is about 100 feet. So we know that this is about 100 feet now. Okay, now our second step. Find the time it takes for the boat to get from the edge of the pond to the center along the radius. Well, we know it's 100 feet and it's moving at 5 feet per second. So 100 divided by 5 is 20. That means it's going to take 20 seconds to get to the center of the pond. Okay, reflecting and analyzing these relationships. So, uh, Dante checks the answer to step one by multiplying it by six and comparing it to the given circumference. Explain why Dante's estimation method works. Well, he used step one right here, and he multiplied this by six instead of 6.28. Well, it looks like six is pretty close to 6.28. So, that looks like it would be a good way to estimate. Pi is about 3, so 2 times pi times the radius is 6, is about 6r, or 6 times the radius. See, uh, pi is about 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, 2 times pi is about 6. And 6 times 100 is equal to 600, so that is close to the answer that we got of 628 for the... So this... This right here, 628, is 600 is close to that 628, which is the circumference. So that, that checks out pretty good. And what if? Suppose the model boat were traveling at a rate of 4 feet per second. How long would the model boat take to get from the edge to the center of the pond? Okay, well, if it's traveling at 4 feet per second, we got 100 feet divided by 4. And now we're talking about 25 seconds instead of the 20 right there. And so there you go. All right. A circular garden has a circumference of 44 yards. Lars is digging a straight line along the a diameter of the garden at a rate of 7 yards per hour. How many hours will it take him to dig across the garden? Well, I got the information up here. First, I'm going to use circumference as diameter times pi because 
we are talking about the diameter right here. Then I put in the information. Well, it's uh, the circumference is 44. That's the information that was given here. Circumference is 44. And, and I already know that pi is pi, so I'm trying to solve for the diameter. Well, diameter times pi is equal to circumference. So if I have the circumference 44 divided by 3.14, that would give me the diameter. And 44 divided by 3.14 is 14. So there's my diameter. And so the diameter is 14, and I have to divide it by the rate, 7 yards per hour. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. So that's how I got about 2 hours. That is what you got to know about circumference of circles and using circumference and radius and diameter and all those wonderful things. Thanks for watching.